Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here with episode 5 of my Reactor Craft tutorial series. Uh, if you remember in the last episode we built a high temperature gas reactor. And now after some tweaking, I've discovered that I built it completely wrong. Um, <laughs> stupid Blox's team still escaping. Um, I overthought and overbuilt the, uh, not the reactor, but the um, other component, the heat exchanging and, and, and steam boiler components. And uh, I just I slapped way too many things on it, and it was actually inhibiting the reactor's performance. So I'm going to call this the less is more update. Uh, all I have now is a single heat exchanger with a single uh, steam boiler. I still don't know if it's actually necessary to cover the sides of blocks, but I am anyway. One heat exchanger with one steam boiler is actually producing more and more consistent power than the two heat exchangers with like five or six or seven heat, uh, boilers each. Um, so I was totally overthinking it. See, right now we're up to our full speed and our torque is hovering around 14,000 newton meters. Before, we were not actually at this level. We were a bit lower. And I can actually show you what happens if I try and add another steam boiler. It's actually really weird. Okay, so just make sure that adding those blocks didn't affect anything. With steam lines, you got to watch out. They've got infinite capacity, so if you mess with them, you can screw yourself up. If I add a steam boiler here, which you'd think would provide you with more steam, if we wait, this will actually end up going down. See right now it's still right up where it is, probably because there's so much steam in the steam lines. But what I've... so much steam getting away. It shouldn't be getting away. But what ends up happening when we add more steam boilers is that our uh, system actually gets less efficient. Here, let me go ahead and add another one. working earlier this demonstration but now the demonstration doesn't appear to be working you have to take my word for it because when I stuck three of them on there I was getting around 850 and when I brought down, down to one I was once again getting 950 uh, megawatts I think there's just so much steam in the, in the tubes that it's not actually making a difference here but trust me on that one heat exchanger with one steam boiler is more than enough. It's exa that's what you need. Just just one heat exchanger and one boiler. I wouldn't have expected that. Uh, I would have expected needing more, but of course, I guess I'm just overthinking it. Like I said. Because with one heat exchanger and one boiler, we're easily... We're maxing out this turbine. We're hovering around 950 megawatts, which is actually more consistent power than we were getting before. And I think the reason for that is... How is steam escaping over here? The reason for that, I'm saying, is because of the way the steam boilers work. So every time the heat exchanger reaches 100 millibuckets of hot carbon dioxide gas, it heats up by 100, I think 100 and something, uh, C which also heats up the steam boiler. So while this steam boiler is below 100 C, it's not producing any steam, so you want to try and keep it above, at or above 100 C as much as possible. So you see right now, the steam boiler is above 100 most of the time. Nope, my phone's ringing. It's above 100 most of the time, but when you add more steam boilers, then the heat from the heat exchanger gets distributed again, uh, among uh, more blocks then the boilers are actually below 100 more often. So in the end, it seems like one boiler is actually the way to go. So yeah, I just wanted to make a short little video uh, correcting the pretty large design flaw in my, uh, in my reactor here. That's all you need, one heat exchanger and one boiler. 
I guess heat exchangers are quite a bit more powerful than I thought. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, stay tuned for future episodes. I'm Simon Leach, and I'm signing out.